Greetings everybody. I'm going to do a reaction to this video that sent to me. I'm going to play it and I'm going to pause it and do my commentary throughout, okay? Listen carefully. To my fellow African diaspora, a very good day to all of you. My name is Ambassador Arikana Chihombori Kwao. Over the past couple of days, I've received many messages, emails, phone calls, and video clippings of the abuse that is being meted to our fellow African diaspora living in China. I've watched in horror Africans roaming the streets of China with their possessions after being evicted out of their homes simply because they are Africans. I've watched in horror Africans roaming the streets with their suitcases and at times with nothing at all, roaming the streets after being thrown out of their hotel rooms simply because they're Africans. I have watched in horror women carrying babies roaming the streets of China with nowhere to go after being thrown out of their homes simply because they're Africans. I've heard many stories. She's very passionate as she's speaking. But she sounds surprised. And many of, us, many of us are surprised that these things are happening in 2020. And my question to you is why? It's of Africans who are married to Chinese being separated from their husbands or wives simply because they were Africans. I've heard stories about Africans being forced to take COVID-19 tests simply because they're Africans. In many cases, these individuals did not meet criteria for testing or they had been quarantined for the specified time period as mandated by the under-pandemic laws of China. Not once have I heard any complaints of any African disobeying the under-pandemic laws of China. Why is it then that Africans are being singled out and mistreated? This situation is not acceptable. It is wrong and it will not be tolerated. To President Xi, I say, while you have enjoyed good relationships with all the African leaders, it is precisely... While they have enjoyed wonderful relationship with Africa, the Africans are assuming that uh, the Chinese wanted to have good relationship with them. As far as I'm concerned, the Chinese have a kind of financial arrangement with African countries and no indication. They have not demonstrated anything to show that they're asking to have um, anything but that, a financial arrangement because of that that you should do the right thing do the right You're thing sitting in the big boy's chair what big boy I'm asking you to make the big what big boy chair is he sitting in i i mean so if china is sitting in the big boy's chair then where is the african sitting we have to listen to the language and the language that we speak send a very broad message to those who listen. Avoid decisions. We're counting on you to make sure that the Africans that are roaming the streets and have been evicted from their homes be allowed to go back home. No, the question is, you're just saying we're going to tell you that this must stop. The Africans must stop roaming the, tr the streets. And my question is, aren't there Chinese living in Africa? Because if this is happening, you know, um, would it not be a sign to the Africans that we don't really care about you, we don't respect you? Therefore, instead of having this conversation and begging individuals to do the right thing, then maybe you might want to take action and do the same. Do likewise. Now, it's it's unfortunate for innocent people who are not involved in politics to be involved in these things. But I'm sorry to say, in this time, it's tit for tat. 
the Africans talk too much. They talk more than they act. We're also asking you to make sure that the Africans who are roaming the streets because they have been thrown out of their hotel rooms be allowed to go back to their hotel rooms. As we speak, President Xi, may I remind you that we have over 10 million Chinese residing in Africa where we have welcomed. Okay. See, I'm listening to this the same time you do. I didn't listen to it before. I just read some um, subheading and figure where this might be going. But she's addressing that. But I'm saying, instead of asking them to do this, then maybe you want to follow suit. Come to them with open arms. Open well, arms. the Chinese establish themselves to marry Africans and live happily ever after in our Africa. That's your problem. See, nobody else who treat you unfairly has these ideas that if we do all these wonderful things to you and for you, you're going to reciprocate. They always take care of their own. They always do what is in their best interest. And Africans, I'm sorry to say, have failed to do that. They have not operated in their own best interest. Why can't Africans be awarded the same welcome that we have given to millions of your citizens? What is being done to Africans in China is deplorable and the world cannot stand by and allow it to continue. No, you really shouldn't stand by and allow it to continue. But you have to stop with the talking and the warning. Because I'm sure China didn't warn Africa that they were going to do this to the African citizens. Or anywhere else in the world where Africans live... Who experience um, you know discrimination you're not forewarned to be honest with you it should be expected not to say it should be tolerated but it should be expected because if you have demonstrated a certain thing over a period of time you shouldn't have to remind folks that you're capable of doing these things While we understand that the majority of the Chinese are good people, they're good citizens in yes, China as well course. as in Africa. However, sadly, among them, there are a few bad apples. No, stop being a hypocrite. There are not a few bad apples as far as this is, situation is concerned. In fact, the majority of the apples are bad when it comes to discrimination towards African people. And again, I'm saying based on history, based on relationship with Africans and Chinese. I've never, I, I've never seen that mutual respect. Again, I'm not saying that all Chinese are racist or prejudiced or whatever. I'm not saying all. That would be a dumb statement. But I'm saying too much of these individuals have demonstrated this kind of disrespect towards African people. And in 2020, we're still crying about it. In fact, it's not just Chinese people. It's other people who have demonstrated uh, disrespect towards African people. And we're still asking these individuals to either apologize or we're asking these individuals, you know, to come and accept. Stop asking for acceptance. If you're in your country and you've invited others to that country, they have to come with an attitude of reverence. I'm sorry. This is your space. Every country you go, when you are an immigrant or you are invited there, uh, you have to carry your A-game. And you have to respect the law of the land. And you have to respect the people. And if you don't, you're going to be expelled. Right now, as we speak, I see a post on Lisa Anna's page where she's saying she's asking America not to deport individuals during this time because of the epidemic. And, you know, you're at that crossroad where things could really spike. So even in this crisis, people don't cry Cree when they're dealing with Africans. And when we say Africans, we're talking about black people. You know, people don't pause. They don't put the pause button on regardless of what's happening in the world to deal with Africans or to deal with black people on a whole. But we always, we're always on the pause. We're always on the pause button. And when other folks don't pause like we do, we get upset. I just don't get it. A few bad apples that have chosen to give China a bad name. 
a few bad apples that are she's just been politically correct in the eyes of the africans she's just been politically correct this is a situation that cannot be allowed and these individuals continue. don't like black people president she you are a good man and we would like the relationship between china and the african governments to continue that is the problem you always want the thing to continue even when individuals are saying, we don't really care much about you. We don't care about you. We don't care about you. We are always saying, oh, please, let's continue this relationship. They don't, we don't ever think that, you know, when you demonstrate a certain kind of, you know, hatred towards me, I have no choice but to remove myself from that situation because I can't control you. I can't change you, but I can change me. Unabated. But the behavior that's coming from a few of your citizens will not be tolerated. And just we're being politically correct. what is right. Because she knows it's not coming from just a few. The Africans are no longer going to tolerate this abuse. From the Chinese or anybody else for that matter. The African youth are enraged. We're asking when is... Telling someone that you're angry and showing them is two different things. And we tell too much. We're always telling, I'm angry, I'm upset, I'm going to show you that I'm upset. And not demonstrate that. Because we're not trying to get respect. We're trying to get acceptance. Enough going to be enough. When is enough going to be enough? The power is in your hands. See? Power is in Mr. Chi's hand. That's the problem. We always put the power in someone else's hand to govern us, to do right by us. And I have a problem with that. We value, as Africans, our relationship with China. But they don't value yours. Please do not allow a few bad apples within your citizens to ruin what is otherwise a wonderful relationship. Yeah, right. One exploitative US. relationship. As a united citizens, as a united African citizens in the diaspora, we are asking you, President Xi, to do what is right, to do what is just, and to do what is fair. Asking another man to do what's right, what is just, what is fair, is taking away the power from yourself to determine these things for yourself. Do you understand that? Always asking someone else to do right by you is really relinquishing your own power to demand those changes, not just in words, but action. So with everything that's happening in the world right now, we still play that role, that submissive role, where we're always going to the master and bowing down and asking this master to do right by us. It does not make, I find it very infuriating, to be honest with you. The children of Africa are saying, enough is enough. The abuse of Africans at home and abroad, be it in China or on the continent, has got to stop. Imagine not, telling China to be respectful to the people on the continent and outside. Does not make any sense to me. Now, please don't get me wrong. I see what she's saying. You know, she's standing up to this individual or these individuals and saying, stop talking for heaven's sakes. Act. Everybody acts. They don't talk. The, the people that are slated to go to Jamaica now um, to be deported, nobody's asking. They're telling you. They're telling you nothing changes. We're still going to send these people home. Be aware of some of these abuses. But as a united African citizen in the diaspora, we hope you receive our message in the spirit with which it is being delivered to you. Begging. You are a good man. Precision. You're begging. Okay, I had enough of this. Anyway, um, once again, African people find themselves in a position, you know, subordinate position. But you can't always blame these other persons, these individuals. First of all, Africa has blundered as far as it comes to allowing, you know, individuals to come in and, you know, take a piece of the pie. And... Uh, they gladly give off their land. They gladly, you know, subject their people to all kinds of abuse. And then we hear arguments from this lady, even though it's well-intentioned. You know, I'm just tired of this kind of argument. So for the person who said this to me, you know, thank you so much. Um, you know, I decided I wanted to respond to it. Maybe I'm just biased because 
everything she's saying to me, I've heard it before, to be honest with you. I just don't like the groveling. I don't like always talking about the same thing. I don't like that father-child relationship that I hear in with, with Africans as they speak about uh, discrimination. Other nations, when they are disrespected, they act with force. And the action is swift. And I think that's what's lacking in our in our race. We only go swiftly to attack our own people. We go swiftly for justice when it comes to our own. And we always allow the ones who show us the most disrespect, disrespect to always come back, to always return, doing the same thing. Thank you for sending this for me. And um, I hope I didn't talk too much and that you heard at least some of what she's saying. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, like I said, I didn't listen to it before. I played it with you. But, you know, I kind of, the first few notes, uh, it sounds like a song to me, a poor recording. And it's something that will never change until you change or until I change. Stop trying to change other persons, change you. Stay blessed, everybody.